Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How are you? <laughs> I miss seeing you. Um, this week I have felt more the subtleness of this reality and also the missing that comes with remembering um, the before and with some of the fear that comes with the uncertainty of what comes next. So in that spirit, um, our practice today is dedicated to rooting and to finding and connecting with the roots that are within and also um, with this dear Mother Earth that is sustaining us right now. Um, so those of you that have been following on social media or in the newsletter or um, doing practices with us, you know that this week has been, yeah, about roots. And so we'll kind of close that today together. Um, and I know there are some new folks, so welcome to those of you that are joining for the first time. That is the gift and the beauty of this is that um, our tiny little little studio, little space can open up um, and welcome others who wouldn't ordinarily join us. So, so that's that's a silver lining. Um, and if I didn't introduce myself and we don't know each other, my name is Courtney. And I really hope that we will see each other in person <laughs> at some point in the nearer future. So why don't you join me and take a comfortable seat if you have um, a blanket or a firm pillow or a block, um, would be great to sit on. Just allow your hips to come up a little bit higher than your knees. And we'll just start with a little bit of heat in our hands. And so you can just rub your palms together like this. And so you feel some friction and some heat come. And then just bring your hands right over your eyes. And take several cleansing breaths in through your nose and out your mouth. On your exhale, feel your body settle, your sits bones ground. And on your next inhale, feel some length come into your spine. Let the top of your head rise up towards the ceiling. And at the end of your next exhale, just bring your hands down to meet right in the heart space, palms touching in Anjali Mudra. Let your thumbs rest right at the sternum and begin simply by noticing how you are right now. Observe the quality of sensations, how your body feels. Notice the breath without changing it. Just notice where you feel breath in your body. And maybe where the breath feels restricted. And just notice the quality of your mind and thoughts right now. And as always, we begin from this place of connecting in so that we can be working with and feeling into what is. And feeling what is, then we can start to notice where we feel stuck, whether that's in the body or in our mindset. And by noticing where we feel stuck, we can start to set an intention for a practice that supports 
where we are right now and what we're seeking. So start to connect with what brings you to your mat, to your practice today. What are you seeking? What is the feeling or the quality that you're seeking? And if you'd like to join me in this collective intention around rooting, around sourcing and cultivating roots within, go ahead and set that as your intention. Maybe there's a particular part of your life or your experience right now where you're really seeking a sense of connection. to be plugged in to a source energy. And begin to join your attention now with your breath. And if you know Ujjayi breath, you can work with that. And if Ujjayi breath is not in your practice, just a nice smooth breath in and out through your nose. And see if you can make your exhale just a little bit longer than your inhale. Start to sense how the belly moves back towards your spine on the exhale, helping to release the breath out. And on your inhale, feel like you can keep a little bit of that tone of your low belly. So the place just between your pubic bone and your belly button. I'm just feeling some support come here on the exhale and maintaining some of that support as you inhale and start to guide the breath into the back of your body. And maybe start to notice that you can even bring some direction to the breath so that the inhale is moving in and down to your base, to your pelvic floor. And your exhale with that toning of the belly is helping to guide the breath up and out. As you inhale, keeping some of the support of the low belly. Feel the whole torso fill from bottom to top. And on the exhale, feel the breath release. Up and out. And at the end of your next exhale, you can hold your breath out for about three seconds. If you're menstruating or pregnant, you'll just continue with an even breath. And then you can release and inhale. And we'll do this just a few more times. So at the end of your exhale, you're just gonna hold the breath out a little bit. You might feel your pelvic floor and for women, the inside of the vaginal walls lifting slightly, engaging in mula bandha. And on the X, excuse me, on the next inhale, release the breath. Release the mula bandha. Just let the inhale come in naturally. Good. At the end of your next inhale, just come back to a natural breath in and out. Check in with yourself, notice how you feel. It's such a simple way to begin. And we'll welcome ourselves. Let's welcome each other with our voices and just know that even though we're all on our own, maybe some of you are practicing with your housemates, with your family, but open your ears and see if you can just sense the sound, the vibration coming all the way around the world right now. Take a breath in. 
Let it out. We'll chant the sound of O. Breathe in all the way to your base. And release your hands, release your head. You can just start with a few easy circles for your neck. It might be helpful for you to change the crossing of your legs if you're sitting cross-legged. And just take a few half circles here. And finding again your even breath in and out through the nose with maybe a slightly longer exhale. Maybe a few circles for the neck. Being gentle with yourself here. And then going in the opposite direction. Next time your head comes chin towards the chest, just pause there and start to walk your hands forward. You can be up on your fingertips. We worked on Wednesday, those of you that joined me, um, with really rooting through the fingertips. And so here can be a nice place just to come back to that. And then notice that you're not pressing your weight down into the fingers, but you're actually lifting from the tips of the fingers up all the way into the center of your palm and then from the center of your palm through your arms right into the heart space. The armpits can turn a little bit in towards your heart, and then your head can release here. Keep your sits bones grounded. And start to feel again some of that tone in your pelvic floor, internally for women, and also the belly drawing back towards the spine. And then let's walk the hands all the way back up. Draw your knees together. You can give your knees a little love, a little rub. You can take that rub all the way down to your feet. And then pull the feet together. So soles of your feet are touching, and you're sitting in a bada kanasana. You're still up on a blanket um, or a cushion. Walks are okay, too. Just bring your thumbs Come right to the base of your heel and draw from the base of your heel from the inside all the way to the big toe mount. And just a few times, I want us to become aware of this line here from the base to the big toe, moving up a few times. And then we're going to move down. So this is from the base of your big toe to the inner heel. And maybe just start to become aware of the shape that your feet make. You might even notice that one foot is bigger. That's kind of normal. And also that one big toe mount or one heel looks bigger, somehow more puffy than the other. Yeah, that's normal too. But just maybe be aware of which one it is, which one it is. And then I'm going to give just a little bit of a rub with my thumbs to the ankle, just all around the ankle joint. And then I'm going to leave my hands resting on my ankles and start to take a little bounce to your knees. I want you to keep connected through the big toe mount and the inner heel and just bring a little bit of fluid into your legs. Your toes can spread apart. Yeah, so the toes are kind of fanning out like a flower, but the big toe mounts are staying connected. And maybe you feel a little bit of heat coming into your legs. And then from here, just let your legs come still. Pull back a bit with your hands onto your heel or your ankles and press your ankles into your hands. Feel your chest rise. Feel your shoulder blades tip onto your back. Support your belly on the exhale and fold yourself forward. And from here, one more time, walk your hands out up on your fingertips if you like. And then walk your hands a little bit over to the right. Just a little bit over to the right. You're not going to go super far. Release your head. Check that your, your throat and your face are soft. 
and then come back over to the left side. Maybe notice if one foot is pressing more strongly than the other, so you can even that out. And then come back into the center and all the way back up. You can close the knees, extend your legs out one more time. This time, take your blanket or whatever you're sitting on away. Have a sip of tea if you like. Legs stretch straight out front. Good. And then from here, go ahead and bring your hands right by your sides. Hands are right by your sides, palms on the ground. Fingers spread wide, and just start to feel the connection of your hands into the earth. See if you can press down through the index finger knuckle, and then trace a line from the index finger knuckle all the way to the pinky knuckle, all the way down to the outer base of your hand, then to the base of your thumb, and all the way back up to that index finger knuckle. So you're just making a circle around the perimeter of your hand. Start to feel really plugged in here, and then sense the center of your palm lifting away from the ground, and take that lift all the way up into your chest. Start to reach your chest away from your low belly. Your belly button is drawing back. Uh, the back of your neck is long, and then just look over your right shoulder. Look back to center, and look over your left shoulder. Just clearing the neck. Come back to center one more time in Dandasana. And then as you inhale, sweep your arms up, palms face each other, fingers spread wide. Keep that awareness of the center of your palms. And then as you exhale, we're going to pull the knees in super close and fold forward. Now bring your hands around to the outside edge of your feet. And here you can just use your thumb and draw your thumb now down the outer edge of your feet. From the pinky toe, the metatarsal at the base of the pinky toe, all the way down to the outer edge of your heel. So you can just get aware of that connection. Nice, and also it's a little bit of a forward fold. Some of you will extend your legs further out, keeping your thighs and your belly and chest connected. Keep the toes spreading wide, just giving yourself this really nice little, it's a little foot massage, but it's also bringing some attention to your feet. And then go ahead and pause with the massage and just hold your hands right around your heels. You can squeeze your forearms and your shins against each other, your outer calves more specifically, and then see if you can, again, find that length reaching your heart space forward, keeping rooted through your sits bones, belly scoops, and release your head forward. Take three more full breaths into the back line of your body. And then on your inhale, leading with the chest, come all the way back up. One more time, sitting in Dandasana, finding that connection through the perimeter of your palms, center of the palm lifts, heart lifts, lifting chin now away from chest, gaze towards the sky. Keep your head supported here through your pelvic floor, lifting. No strain on the neck, look forward and release. Cross your ankles and bring yourself back into downward facing dog, pedaling out through the backs of your legs. Good. Start to take that little pedaling and just walk your feet forward now. Come all the way to the front edge of your mat. Take a big bend in your knees and reach your hands back behind you to hook your thumbs and take your 
fingers spreading wide up towards the sky. Bend your knees as much as you need to keep contact to chest, belly, and thighs. You can nod your head forward and back and side to side. And then raise your hands to your hips. Inhale and come all the way up to stand. <laughs> Good. Nice. Let's take a moment at the top of your mat. Kind of shake it out. Also, if you have pose like me, you can just take off the center. <laughs> Good. Just feel a little bit of bounce come into the body. And then we're going to find a Tadasana here. So in Tadasana, to find it, we're going to take the heel, let's say of our left foot, and turn it into the big toe mount of your right foot. And then keep your big toe on the ground, both of them, and just swivel your foot back. Yeah, so now you're here in a nice Tadasana. Hands come down by your sides, wide on the front, wide on the back of your body. See if you can lift your toes, spread them wide, and feel how the big toe mounds really press down. So you can keep that action, press down through the pinky toe round, press through the inner heel and the outer heel, and then lower your toes down. Feel a little bit of lift come through your arches, feel it come all the way up through your inner thighs. A little bit of lift in the pelvic floor, bellyless, chestless. Top of the head lifts, arms can lift up. Really nice and spacious through the sides of the body. Go ahead, go ahead and hook your thumbs. Take your hands over and your chest over, but your legs stay still to the right side. Nice, feel the support through the legs. Breathe into your side ribs. And inhale to come up. Switch the hooking of your thumbs and come to the opposite side. Notice which of your feet is taking more weight. And can you even it out a little bit by pressing more through your inner foot? So here it would be your left foot. And inhale and come back up. Release your hands down to your hips. Lengthen through the spine and bend your knees, fold forward. One more time, Uttanasana. Hands to the earth. Inhale to lengthen through your spine. Step your left foot back. Come to a high lunge, or at least your, your back leg lifted here. Up on your fingertips, or a hop if you have blocks. Have your blocks there. Shifting a little bit forward and back, just finding what feels like center. And as you connect to your feet, Find again that plugging in through the ball of the big and little toe, the inner and outer heel, and that lift through your arch. And step yourself back, downward facing dog. And inhale, shift forward, plank pose. And then bring your knees down, bring yourself all the way to the earth, long through your toes, baby cobra. And knees down. One more time. See if you can come up really connected to your feet so the toes are spread wide. The big toe mound is pressing now on the front into the earth. And see if you can feel that come all the way up through your inner thighs into your pelvic floor. Lifting, lengthening. Belly drawing back for support. Go ahead and tuck your toes here. Reach your seat back. Come to dab to a child's pose with your toes tucked, forehead on the ground. Scooping in the belly as you lengthen the sacrum, the tailbone. And then slide your hands back. You can roll your spine. Come to sit back on your heels. Sweep the arms out wide as you inhale, palms together. Exhale, hands come down the center line. Slide yourself all the way to all fours. And one more time, step your right foot, same foot forward and again. This time, keep your back knee down. Inhale, sweep the arms up alongside the ears. Low lunge, Anjane Asana. Find breath in the back line of the body. And exhale, hands to the earth. Lift your back leg, bring it forward, Uttanasana, fold in. 
Inhale to lengthen halfway up. And exhale, step your right foot back, finding your lunge here. Up on fingertips or blocks. Wherever your hands are, you're firmly connected. Check out the connection of your feet and feel that lift from the inner arch, really from the center of your foot, all the way into the center of your root, the Muladhara Chakra. And step yourself back here, downward facing dog. From your dog, find your plank pose. Knees to the earth, lower all the way down. Two cobras with breath coming in and out. And then on this second cobra, let's pause here. And let's just feel where the hands are rooting. Find the perimeter of your hands. Feel the center of the palm lifting energy all the way up into the heart to lengthen the spine. And then tuck your toes, draw the belly back towards the spine to bring yourself back into that child's pose with toes tucked, forehead to the ground. Full breath here, long through the spine, long through the base of your spine. And then on your inhale, rounding through the spine, your head can be the last thing to come up. Arms sweep out wide, palms together. Look up towards your hands and exhale. Bring your hands back down and come back downward facing dog. One more time, taking that left foot forward, back knee down this time, reaching the arms up on Janae Asana. Lengthen your sternum away from your belly. Breath in the back line of your body. Exhale, hands touch down, lift your back knee, step it forward, Uttanasana. Inhale to find length, maybe hands come to your shins. Exhale to fold in, reach the hands back around, find the other hooking of your thumbs, so different from the last time. Again, you can shake the head a little bit to release. And then find the roots through the soles of the feet, so ball of the big and little toe, inner and outer heel. Lifting up through the center of your foot and let that reverberate all the way up through your legs to lift your spine. Float your arms up overhead. Coming back to this standing Tadasana with the arms stretched up alongside your ears. Palms are facing each other. And just for a moment, see if you can really find your shoulders over your hips. And notice where your weight tends to go. Do you sit more in your heels? Or do you go more forward into your toes? Are you hanging out more on your left foot or your right foot? On the inner edge of your foot or the outer edge? Just get curious here. So we start by noticing what is, where are you? Noticing where there's tension and then inviting breath and finding what feels like center. Exhale, your hands into your heart space. Samasthi Tiki. Nice. So part of what we're practicing with finding roots is just noticing first, like, where are we? Where do we try to find a sense of stability? Huh? And for a lot of us, really for all of us, we're going to find that it's shifting and that we tend to favor one side over the other. Huh? And that is nowhere more clear than in a balancing pose. So let's give it a try. So make sure you've got your nice distance for your feet. And you're going to shift right onto your left leg. And just pause with your right knee um, in your hands. And so you're just kind of letting your leg relax here. And just notice, like, is there any shaking? Are you wobbly? If you are super wobbly, you can always do this at the wall with your back to the wall. Okay? And then from here, let's go ahead and take your left hand to your hip. Keep hold of your knee with your right hand and just try like you're opening a door. 
Just a couple of times opening out. Notice what's shifting. Mm -hmm. And see if you can start to really plug in through those four points of your foot and then to lift up through the inner arch. And feel when you lift up through the inner arch and really through the center of your foot, you're going to feel like you're taller somehow. And then you're going to take that right foot and press it to the inner thigh. And again, if this is too much, either at the wall or bring your foot to your calf, palms together, tree pose. And so notice here in your tree pose, the little wobbles, and see if you can start to really find your center. That you're at once growing roots down, and at the same time, you're nourishing and harnessing the energy all the way up pelvic floor is engaged, and maybe the arms start to float up. But the arms only float up because the whole rest of the, the body is integrated and supported. Good. You can try a little bit of a side balance here if you like. Bring your hand onto your thigh, right hand to your thigh. And then just like we did, whoa, now we use it. And just like we did with the Tadasana, we want to see, can you keep a sense of support and stability through the legs so that the spine and the torso can enjoy the movement? Come back to the center. Bring your leg forward and see if you can just extend it out and hold it here for a moment. You can turn your palms face up. Yeah, and you'll feel here to keep your leg lifted. A lot of it is hugging your leg back in, not so much reaching it out and then lower down. Yeah, that's kind of big time. Let's try the other side. So root it through your right foot, left knee comes in. Standing up nice and tall. And then we'll just play with that opening. And my teacher, I've heard him say it's like opening a door. Yeah, love that. Just opening the door. And each time you might find there's a little bit different movement. Be mindful here of trying to jam open the door or trying to fly the door open. You want to keep your thigh bone integrated. And then as you start to find what feels like your place to be. So the knee is really found its, not maximum, but its comfortable place to be open. And your foot is pressing into the inner thigh and you can a little bit press the flesh with the inner thigh back. And that will also help you to engage and connect to your root here, your root chakra, your base. Float the arms up as you feel steady. And just let your breath find its way through this pose. Maybe you're playing a little bit with the balance. Another way to play with balance is to take your gaze up towards the sky. Come back to the center when you're ready. Pull your knee forward, and then you can extend out through the sole of the foot. Pull the toes wide. Feel here that your low belly is really going to support you, yeah? And that you can keep that sense of lift from your base, and then lower it down. Pause for a moment. Tadasana. And as you inhale, lift up through your heels. Now notice where your weight shifts. A little bit, not a little bit, a lot to the balls of your feet. And are you more on the ball of the big toe or the little toe? Do you pitch forward or maybe lean back? Try it one more time coming up. And just notice what parts of your legs 
are remaining active here. If you tend to hyperextend, you want to keep a little bend through your knees with the slightest little bend. Float your arms up. Maybe that requires a few tries. But from here, see if you can keep shoulders over hips, keep heels lifted, bend your knees, and come to sit back down like you're sitting in a chair. And feel the low ribs draw in and back. Breathe into your back ribs. And keep your heels lifted. Let's see if we can fold this all the way forward. Coming into a forward fold, heels lifted. Thighs, belly, chest touching. Release through the top of your head. Pull the shoulders away from the ears. And then slowly lower your feet down. Feel like your foot somehow gets a little bit bigger here. Inhale and lengthen chest away from thighs. And then you'll step your left foot back. Keep your heel lifted, coming all the way up, high lunge. Then in your high lunge, you can take a little bend through your back knee. And then you can find that extension. Front thigh is pretty much parallel to the ground. Mm -hmm. And soften shoulders away from ears. And as you exhale, bring your left hand down to the ground. Take your right arm up. Spread the hands away from one another. Enjoy this sweet twist. And exhale. Bring both hands down to the inside of your front foot. Turn your back foot down so your left foot opens parallel to the edge of your mat. Inhale, come up into your warrior two. Find your arms out parallel to the earth. Then maybe just take a moment to really settle into this first warrior two. Find the soles of your feet. Maybe look to your back foot and see what's going on back there. The ball of the big and little toe, inner and outer heel root. Inner arch lifting up away from the earth. Start to straighten through that front leg. Tip your back hand and just let the fingers rest on your back leg. Take a long line from your big toe to your index finger on that right side. Inhale, come back one more time through warrior two. And this time extend out. We played a lot of this. I think it was last week. You can bring your elbow to your knee or to the inside of your, of your calf and then spread your wings wide here. Turning your chest towards the sky. And on your exhale, look to the earth. Bring both hands down one more time to the inside of your front foot and then drop your back knee down. But just pause here. See if you can find that support of outer hips moving in towards one another. Feeling the lift from the base all the way up through the spine. Bring your gaze forward, your heart forward. And then bring your right hand to frame your right foot. Lift your back leg, come back into your dog. Just check out for a second the different feeling on your two sides. Shoot forward, plank. Move down to the earth. You can bring your knees down as you need. Coming up through cobra two times. First time, just coming in and out. Second time, rising up and pausing here. And really playing with length. Tuck your toes, reach your seat back, come into that little child's pose, forehead to the earth. Toes stay tucked. Feel here the belly scoop up and away from your thighs. And then roll yourself all the way back up, spread the arms out wide, bring the palms up overhead. And this time we're going to have you interlace your palms, or your fingers rather, and turn your palms up to the sky. You're sitting back on your heels. Mm -hmm. 
It gets easier, I promise, every time. Squeeze the outer hips, squeeze the legs towards each other. Feel that support from the center and all the way up through your palms. Let your shoulders drop away from your ears. Breathe into the back ribs. And exhale here. Just take your hands exactly as they are onto the ground, interlaced. And we're just going to take a few, you can lengthen your toes, just a few circles for your hips. Going one way, and then going the other way. Okay, now look at your hands and remember which index finger is in front, okay? Because you're going to need to remember that later. Go ahead and release your hands. Come back to your dog. And from here, inhale and look forward. Step your other foot forward. So your left foot comes forward, coming all the way up to your high lunge. Bend a little bit your back knee so you settle in. Feel the legs scissoring towards one another. And notice the difference when you move from your feet, so feet moving towards each other, or when you're just closing the scissors right at the inner thighs. Maybe you feel like you get a little bit more power when you work from your feet, from the earth, from the center of your foot, from the arches, specifically. Extending back long, taking the arms up, taking down. And notice what's happening in your face. Soften the root of your tongue. Inhale and open yourself up into your warrior two. And again, just finding here a little bit of movement, looking at your back foot. Back toes are turned in just slightly to keep this hip happy. And begin to straighten through that front leg tipping back into a reverse. Keeping light through your hands by supporting through your base. Inhaling, coming back into warrior two, and then reach it out nice and long. Feel how you can suspend here for a little bit, or for a long time if needed because you're really grounded through your roots, feet, mula bandha, and bring your elbow to the inside or to the top of your knee. Oh, we forgot one little bit. We'll get to it, don't worry. Spread your arms wide here. Inhale, look down to the earth. Let's windmill the right hand down as we lift up that back leg and we'll take our twist now. So we'll take that left arm out to the sky. Feel that space come to the front and the back of your chest. And then bring your left hand down, bring your back knee down, and just pause to the inside for a few breaths. And you can play with drawing the legs energetically towards one another to lengthen. And then frame your front foot. Bring your right your left foot back, rather, come back to your dog, shift forward to your plank pose. Good. In plank pose, let's lower ourselves down and pause in chaturanga and use the support of your feet to lengthen and launch yourself forward into upward facing dog. Feel the tops of the feet grounding. Feel the toes grounding and draw that all the way up through the front of your body. Breathe into the back of your body. Feel the roots through the fingers. And then release yourself back, downward facing dog. And then you can take 
down dog, or if you're liking this child's pose, you can stay there. We'll eventually arrive there. And drop your knees down. Come sit back in top toes, child's pose. And then roll yourself all the way up. Spread the arms up towards the ceiling. Interlace your fingers. Remember, other index finger comes in front now. And we're going to pause here. Sitting back on your heels. Palms really facing out towards the sky. Arms are strong and straight. Pelvic floor is keeping support, especially at the end of that exhale. Low belly keeping support so that your side bodies can really be long, shoulders resting onto the back. And just take your tongue right here, slide it to the roof of your mouth, and feel the dome at the top of your mouth. And then let your tongue relax. So just be aware of that dome as you release your hands down. Good. And make your circles. One more time, just a couple. Just to release it out. Pressing nice and strong with the index finger and knuckle. Good. Let's come back. Hands to the ground. Lift yourself back, downward facing dog, and then take a really nice bend in your knees. Just a few little bounces here. Turn the armpits towards your heart. Find that perimeter of your hands rooting and the center of your palms lifting right through your fingertips. And then look forward on the end of your exhale. We're going to launch forward. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, fold in. You can keep your feet together or take them wide. Bend your knees, lift your heels. Come back. There we go. <laughs> Hang on, come back. Chair pose. There we go. Mm, finding your center. Might take a little more effort. Good. Inhale, rise all the way up. Ooh, lift your heels. And then lower down. Aha, shake it out. Okay. Hi, everybody. Oh, everybody's here. So nice. Okay. A little bit upside down, okay? Now, we have some all sorts of different people here, yeah? All different bodies, all different situations. So the first upside down I'm gonna offer you is Pasarda Padasanasana, which is wide leg forward fold. And this is a type of inversion, and it's a good one to do for women who are menstruating or pregnant, and for any person who um, is not up for inversions, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, just it's not your practice, whatever. Okay, no big deal. Coming here, folding forward right at the crease, and just playing. Hands can be down at the outside of your legs. You can play with walking your hands forward. You can also play if you are if you are feeling a little more energetic, but you're not really wanting to fold upside down with Shakti kicks. Okay, so I'm going to let you be with that. If you would like to play a little bit with L pose, we've been doing that as well, and that's a good prep for handstand. So in L pose, remember, you'll bring your back to the wall. You'll bring a block or any marker that you can use where your feet are. You'll come with your hands as though you were going to take down dog. Come into down dog with your feet at the wall. And then shift your weight forward. Shoulders are going to be right over your wrists. And your feet will walk up the wall. And it's called L pose because you make an L with your body. Now, the fun thing about L pose, for those of you that are working with it today, is 
the chance to really connect with these roots that we've been playing with in the hand, the perimeter of your hand, grounding the center of your hand, lifting. Same with your foot on the wall. The four points, ball of the big toe, inner heel, ball of the little toe, outer heel, pressing, inner arch, center of the foot, lifting, okay? Play with that in L pose, keeping an awareness of that line from base to crown, keeping an awareness of the breath, really coming into the back body. For most of us, when we play in this posture, and if you're not there yet, just go into it. You can sort of tune in <laughs> as I'm talking. But for a lot of us, when we come into these postures, same in Prasarya Padasanasana in the wide leg forward fold. See if you can become aware of how you can even out the sense of space in your torso. So notice where you get stuck. Notice where your body, where your breath gets stuck. And then if you're playing with elbows, and you want to try a handstand, we're going to give that a go today. Yeah, I'm going to give you a little tutorial. I've been playing, I play with it mostly outside, to be honest. It's my favorite place to do handstands because I really love to be able to put my hands in the earth and get a little grip. And I know that's not possible for some of us right now. And if it's not, like, sending you extra love right now. If it is possible for you to get outside at some point and get your hands on the ground, I really recommend playing that way with handstand. So, to play with handstand, I think I'll come to this wall. You can see me here. To play with handstand, you'll want to come close enough to the wall that you'll be able to let your one foot rest on the wall, but far enough away that you um, are knocking your head. Yeah, and again, the wall when you come up. So you start in down dog. You plug in through your hands, this is so important, and you just find a nice, long, downward facing dog. You'll look forward, and you need to look more at the wall. You need to look ahead of your hands. Look where you're going. Step your favorite foot forward, yeah, whichever that is. If you're a goofy foot, it's going to be your right foot. If you're regular, it's going to be your left foot. And you can just play here with lifting your heel and lifting your leg. Important thing is that the limbs, especially the arms and your extended leg, stay straight. Then you can just switch and do that on the other side. So everyone can do this, even if you're not going up into handstand today. Just switch sides. And then it's always good to take a break. It can get quite tiring, actually. You want to turn your armpits towards one another. That will help with the strong arms. And then when you're ready, kick up. <laughs> Easier said than done, right? So important thing on the kick up here is that hugging into the center. And then once you are up, flex your feet. Find Tadasana. Find your Tadasana. And I'm here, right now, I'm keeping both my heels on the wall. And I'm lengthening from the crown of my head all the way up through the center to my feet. From there, you can maybe play with balance. It's a lot to do that and talk. Yeah? And just noticing, if you do manage to come up, if you do manage to come up, just once you're there, for some of us, it's just a lot to get upside down. I know for me, still sometimes, but for quite a couple of years, I've been playing pretty regularly, not daily, but almost. And what it allows me to do is to just notice each time yeah, a little bit something different. And right now, I invite you to just notice where you feel stuck. Just become aware. And simply with that awareness, you can start to invite your breath and your attention in. Okay? 
So hopefully that gave you some time to play. Again, I encourage you to go outside and do it at a wall. We used to do it with a group of women I practiced with up the hedge. It was a little bit extreme for me. I like a nice steady wall, but um, a hedge can work as well. And also, um, make sure you take rest, okay? So let's go ahead and come down to sit. And you can sit on a blanket, the edge of your blanket. And let's just release that out. So take your legs and extend them straight out in front of you. And one more time, find your Dandasana. So here, your hands can come right by your sides. You're lengthening from crown to head. And then cross your right leg over your left. Take your left arm around and twist to the right. Bring your right hand behind you. Look back behind you. Source the support from the earth. And then find the softness here. Can you back off about 5%? And in backing on 5%, maybe you find even a little bit more space. Look over your left shoulder. And release, come back to center and switch sides. Right leg out, left leg comes in. Cross the right elbow over, and just start from the space, this place of spaciousness, twisting. You can play here with the roots, hands, feet, base. And turn and look over your right shoulder. And release it. And take both legs out in front of you. Slide the blanket away. Feet to the ground, hands to the ground, fingers turn back to face your seat. Coming into reverse table. We've been playing a lot with this one. Elbows moving in towards one another. And then as you press down through the four corners of your feet, through the perimeter of your hand, you're lifting up through the center of your foot, through the center of your palms. Keep gazing down towards your knees. Then just feel the shoulders coming onto the back. Lengthen your sternum away from your belly. Keep a little bit of that tone in the pelvic floor. Lower yourself down, pull the knees into the chest, and sit up for boat pose. Are you getting familiar with this flow now? Pull the knees into the chest, fingers spread wide, and feel as the shoulder blades tip onto your back, you can find length on your front line. All right, release your feet down. Bring your hands back down behind you. Coming up again into your reverse table. Your feet should be right underneath your knees and your wrists underneath your shoulders. And then as you start to find that support really in the center, ground a little more through your left leg. Pull your right knee into your chest. Take your foot up to the sky. Mm-hmm. As you extend through your leg, feel that rooting from the center of your foot all the way back in. Release it down. Reset if you need to. And then switch your weight to your right leg. Pull the left knee in. Take it up. Find your breath. And release it down. Lower your seat all the way down. Ooh, pull your knees into your chest. 
Find your bow pose here. We're gonna keep the legs squeezing into the center line. Here my toes are really getting nice and extended. You can straighten your legs or keep them bent. Bring your left fist into your right hand and let's start a little twist. And we're trying to keep our legs connected and not moving so much. Come back to the center, switch right fist into left palm. And of course, if this is not appropriate for you, you're modifying keeping your feet on the ground. Good, coming back to center, release, cross your ankles. Oh, so good. Give yourself a little squeeze, let your head release here. And then you can just roll this all the way back onto the ground. Squeeze your knees into your chest. And then place your left foot on the ground. Hook your peace fingers around your big toe. And take half happy baby on the right side. You could also alternatively take the outer edge of your foot or the back of your thigh. Your choice. Okay, so find the one that suits you right now. And it really allows you to keep this awareness of the roots of your feet. And left leg can stay bent, or if you have the space to extend it out, meaning that your thigh stays fairly well connected to the ground and your spine stays neutral, go for it. And then from here, if you'd like to play with extending your leg out, you can do that as well. Maybe you just take it a few times, inhaling and extending, and exhale, bring it in. And just be mindful. Remember when we were standing in tree pose? Be mindful here that your standing side stays neutral. Next time you keep your leg extended out, really notice that you can breathe into this whole left side, left back side of your body, and maybe that left arm extends long. I'm gonna bring it back into the center. Take your foot or use a strap with both hands or take the back of your leg. Either way. Similar to how we were standing, remember that? And then go ahead and slowly release that leg, reach it all the way down to the earth. Enjoy that you're taller on your right side. And then you can take half happy baby on your left side, which we can begin with the right knee bent. And here, as I settle in with any pose, I'm always just checking in. What is here? Where do I feel stuck? And where can I bring my breath in? And then from there, really the pose, which is just an experience of myself in any given moment, it starts to unfold. And then taking this sort of order of operations, you can bend and straighten from Donna Farhi's book, which I continually recommend and come back to, Bringing Yoga to Life. I'm going to read you something from it in a little bit. And she walks us through this sort of five step process of how to, well, enter into an asana, but how to enter into life, into any situation. And you can find yourself in some version here. Of Eka, what is this, Eka Pada Hastasana? Something like that. And you can also play with this pose with your knee bent. Your right knee can also be bent with your foot on the ground. And the interesting place here is 
just to notice where do you start to lose your center. So where do you start to fall? Just like in our tree pose, where we had to really find that center line. Same here. And then we'll bring the leg right back in. You can take your foot with both hands or take a strap or use the back of your leg. And it's helpful to just remember that you could lengthen, we worked a bit with this in the last weeks too, you can really lengthen this left hip away from the left shoulder. Feet are active, face is not. And then slowly release that leg, bring it all the way to the earth. Take both arms alongside your ears and just stretch long. You could interlace fingers, turn palms away, or hook your thumbs. And then pull the back ribs down towards the earth, taking out a big lumbar curve, really shortening, let's say, the lumbar curve here. Press your big toes together, press the inner heels, spread the pinky toes apart. And then bring your hands down by your sides, place your feet onto the ground. And let's take bridge pose, bringing robot arms, I really like this, this version with your elbows down and your fingers pointing up. And then you'll press your feet into the earth, and remember, when I say press your feet, what part of your foot are you pressing? And maybe you notice, just notice on this first one, what is your tendency? Where do you tend to put your weight on your feet? And then lower yourself down. And then let's bring a little more conscious awareness into the, into the location of connection. So feel the big toe mount, feel the inner heel, and you can draw energetically from that big toe mount to your inner heel. You'll feel that it helps you get a little, now you have a bigger lumbar curve, you'll have more of an arch in your back. And then ground through your outer pinky toe and your outer heel. And now do you feel a little bit like your bum kind of comes together? We can use that to press up and to lift up through the center of your foot. And you can just be here. You can stay with robot arms. You can interlace fingers or hook thumbs. Walk your shoulders a little bit underneath you. Keep the neck clear. And circulating your awareness through your feet, through your legs, up into your pelvis. Trace that line all the way through the center of your spine. Neck free and clear. And then circulate it back along your shoulders, all the way up through your arms. Center of your palms moving energetically away from one another. Circulating back up into the heart, lifting up through the heart. Circulating that all the way up to your hip bones, reaching the hip bones up, softening the inner thighs, keeping the seat, the buttocks engaged. Circulating that awareness all the way back down, move your knees away from your hips and press down strongly through the center of your heels. Reach all the way out through your middle toe. Take another two full breaths here. Just be. And maybe sit down. Pause. Knees touch, feet wide. Now I definitely do not expect <laughs> or even want you to have that kind of monologue in your head in every pose but rather just to know that there's beneath the surface, just like in a tree, 
right? There's this whole network, this whole system of energy, what we might call our roots in this case, that are supporting us. And we're going to take this pose one more time, and I'm going to give you the option of lifting one leg at a time. Yeah, option. So coming into your bridge. If you're interlacing hands, bring your other index finger on top. There we go. Good. And then as you feel yourself rooted here, meaning plugged in to the experience, you can walk your feet a little bit closer together and pull your right knee into your chest and then extend that leg straight up. Feeling what is. Noticing where you're stuck. Inviting in breath. Release. And switch. Release your foot down, release your hands, and this time let's lower down one vertebra at a time. So your shoulders spread wide to clear room. And pause just for a moment right where you are. And then make your fists, make your hands into fists. Place the fists a little bit wide, maybe like right at the edge of your mat, and walk your feet together. And then let your knees open so that your fists are resting to support your thighs. Now, for some of you, you're going to need more support for your legs. So this is where you'll have blocks or pillows or blankets, something that really allows you to rest your legs here. And then we'll just take five full breaths, finding that pattern, inhaling down to your root, to your base, to your pelvic floor, exhaling, drawing the breath up the spine and out the crown of your head. And here you might feel how your spine naturally responds to this movement of breath. You might notice how your mind naturally responds to this movement of breath. At the end of your last exhale, you can take your hands and draw your knees back together. One more time, just give yourself a good squeeze, a hug. You might even just come down and hold your feet, give your feet a little rub. If You'd like anything else to set you up for a rest. You can do that if it's a little pose or if it's just grabbing some materials. I'll give us a minute to prepare for our rest. So as you gather what you need, today, today's oil for me is cheer, inviting that in.
I'd like to send you into Shavasana with um, a little reading from Bringing Yoga to Life. Let your heart open and receive. Listen with your heart. This is Don Farhi's translation of the Gayatri Mantra. And in fact, it comes in chapter 14, the chapter on intention, which was our theme last week. Everything on the earth, in between and above, is arising from one effulgent source. If my thoughts, words, and deeds reflected this complete understanding of unity, I would be the peace I am seeking in this moment. And so as you settle into rest, As you settle in, and perhaps bring with you this awareness that the peace that you are seeking, that all of us is seeking, that we as a whole planet is seeking right now, it is us, it is within us, it is already, already always here.
Let the next breath move to your hands and your feet. And in this way, begin to tune in to simply observe what is. And here, notice instead of where you feel stuck or tense, where you feel easy, where there is ease, where there is that peace that we are seeking. And begin to invite with your breath the ease, the peace, the release to come through the whole of your body. You can just continue to deepen your breath to guide the breath through the whole of the body, bringing you into some very gentle, simple movement. And gradually, you can make your way to one side and rest there. Rest there for a few moments. Really surrender into that stillness. And then begin to make your way to your seat. Support yourself with something underneath your hips. And if you'd like to Keep your attention low, kind of in this more um, root chakra, Muladhara chakra. You can join me in a yoni mudra, which is bringing your fingers interlaced with the fingers pointing up. And then you'll release your index fingers, bring the tips of the index fingers together and the tips of your thumbs, or alternatively, you can make it into a triangle, crossing your thumbs one on top. So either a diamond or a triangle, pointing down and just resting towards the low belly. Shoulders are relaxed, a little bend in the elbows. And let your eyes close as you arrive and tune in, open heart. Curious mind. In this time of uncertainty, when we are, so many of us, seeking for stability, seeking for a sense of grounding, of familiarity, of the known, May we find the center, may we find a rootedness within. And may we also recognize that roots are alive, that they are constantly shifting and adapting. And so we may not see what happens beneath the surface, but to trust and know that we find that sense of support not by being fixed, or by being the same, or by clinging to what we already know, but by actually growing around and into and with what is. And what is, you've seen it through your practice, just by tuning in is always changing. Reality, the world as we know it, is never the same. And so may we find a sense of support, of strength, 
of ease in that. If you'd like to offer a blessing or a prayer or a bit of gratitude, you can connect with that wish right now. And perhaps dedicating your practice beyond the scope of your own experience. Recognizing that we practice, we come to our mats for our own benefit and for the benefit of all beings. And let's close with the Gayatri Mantra, the translation I read earlier. We'll chant it in Sanskrit. If you know it, join in. And if you don't, just keep your heart, keep your ears open, receive. Om Bhur Bhuvaspaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Vargo Ho Devasya Dimahi Tiyo Yona Prachodaya Om Bhur Bhuvaspaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Vargo Ho Devasya Dimahi Tiyo yona prachodaya. Om bhur bhuvaspaha tat samitur varenyam Vargo ho devasya dimahi Tiyo yona prachodaya. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Om shanti 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 Namaste. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for your practice. Thank you for sharing, inviting your friends, <laughs> bringing yoga to life. Um, I don't know if you're here, Yuko, but I know she's reading it and um, I recommended it to so many. It was recommended to me, I think it was part of my teacher training, I can't remember, but um, a zillion years ago. <laughs> and it's still, this is actually the studio copy. Um, but anyway, super recommend. Okay, have a wonderful day. Check your email tomorrow. Um, some opportunities, some new things coming up. And if you're not getting your email and you want to, info at mytreeyoga.com. And um, yeah, there will be more coming. So thanks so much. Thank you, Gabri and Paulina and Alex and Jane. And I know Jane's friends are here. And Emma and Keith and Elisa. Big love to you guys. And um, we'll see each other real soon. Well, yeah, in a different way. <laughs>